Hey guys, John here. Today's pigments patch is called Voices of the Rain. It's a pad and it eats a lot of CPU, so here we go. Alright, so there's a couple cool things with this one here. On the first macro, this is called Comb Plus, and we're going to go over that a little bit later in the video. But just so you hear what it sounds like, this is kind of comb filtering and some extra stuff that I added here as well. So take a listen to what it sounds like now. Now you'll notice with this knob engaged, it does increase the overall volume, which is why over here on the master is substantially lower than most patches. That's to compensate for the comb plus macro over here in case you turn, in case you decide to use that on or turn that on. So putting this back here, we also have this rain macro. So if you want a little bit more rain in the pad, it's easy as a twist of a knob. So yeah, let's dive into the patch and see how it's created. So over in the synth category, we're going to be using the utility engine, all three oscillators in here, turn that off. We're using the sample engine, let's turn that off. The wavetable engine, let's keep this one on. Let's take a look at our effects real quick. And we're using literally every single one here. So let's turn that off as well, which is probably why it contributes to a lot of CPU usage. So first things first, with a pad, let's take a look at our envelope here, because that's going to be very important. So we have our attack, and that's going to be 2.39 seconds. Our decay is going to be 300 milliseconds. Our sustain at one, our release is going to be 3.59 seconds. Now the curves, because these curves are also very important. So the attack curve here is negative 1.12, and that kind of pushes this, this line here, this curve, a little upwards here towards this corner, because I don't personally really like for pads when the curve is kind of coming down and going up as a concave kind of thing. And then the decay curve is going to be negative 4. So with that being said, let's take a look at the first engine here. So this is going to be Wavetable. We're going to be on Arrival, which is on the Pigments 3 category, and it's the third one down. So it sounds something like this. So not a really a bad start. A couple things that you can see that is modulating is as this is moving here. So if we look at the other view, this 2D view, as we play a note or some notes, we can see how that moves. And then it's going to hold here until we release the note. So this here, this modulation is not done with an LFO, but with a function. So let's take a look at this function and see what's going on here. So we have this function and it's basically a triangle shape here, but here I kind of pulled this tension down a little bit, kind of, kind of going counterintuitive for, counterintuitive to what I said for the envelope VCA, but I'm kind of bringing this curve in a little bit and then pushing this one here out a little bit. So it kind of goes a little bit faster into the fade in as it moves this position and then kind of slowly, a little bit slower, kind of releases that tension, right? So this function is going to be in the mode envelope over here. So by default, it's going to come in LFO. So make sure to click this and go to envelope here and then select unipolar because we don't really need to go bipolar because this is already at the bottom. We only really need a positive value to push this knob up, right? And as you see over here, this S is going to be our sustain. So once we hold our notes, we can see that that little dot moving and it's going to stop right there. It's going to sustain. And once we let go, that's when it's finally going to release it and kind of just fade out and kind of go back to the uh, to the original waveform there. And doing something like this really helps really or build up that tension and then also release that tension at the same time to get a little bit more emotion out of that pad, right? So 
moving on from there, we have this phase modulation going. And this is a very, very subtle effect here. So we're using an LFO at 0 0.09, so a very small value. The knob itself is at 0 0.088. So let's take a look at the LFO and see what's happening here. So this is LFO 1 this, that this is happening in, and the rate is very slow. It's 0 0.071 hertz, and it's on free running. So it's just kind of moving, so on, so forth. It's doing its thing at a very slow rate, just giving us a little bit of different texture. So if you select and go into this LFO 1 here, so this wavetable um, phase mod, if we turn that off here, it would sound something like this. So we still have that core of the sound, but once we turn this, uh, this phase modulation on, it sounds kind of cool. See, as that overtone kind of holds when it's off, if we keep it on, the sound is always really moving with this LFO, and that's something very important with pads, is always going to be that change over time. Do a lot of little subtleties, and that's really going to help make your pads come alive and make them sound not really predictable, but also there's a lot of stuff going on. There's a lot of movements happening, and things are going in and out of phase, and so on and so forth. So little small moves like this at 0 0.09 with a very slow LFO can really drastically bring just this alive. Because even if we sustain one note, let's sustain this one right here. So the sound's always really changing, right? And I'm not releasing the key, but if I turn this off, we're just gonna hear this static tone the whole time. And that's gonna get ear fatiguing and kind of boring after a while. So that's the cool little subtleties of things like that. So, moving on from that, we did our position here, our phase modulation. So our unison, this is gonna be a little bit higher than normal. We're, going, we're doing four voices, detune 1.50%, and then the stereo is 100%. And that's really all for this engine, and it's getting sent to filter number one, which we're gonna talk about the filters in just a little bit. So let's take a look at engine number two, which is a sample. So this one is going to be female, uh. She sounds a lot more beautiful than I do, but that's okay. This sample is found in the category, I think it's down here, yeah, in vocal and almost at the bottom right here called the female, uh, interesting uh, title. We're gonna be using granular synthesis on this one and I turn the start position to 0.092 to kind of get in here of this meat and potatoes here. Cause I kind of liked that tonality there. So our density is gonna be 15.3 Hertz. This center knob is gonna be default, so you won't have to touch that. And the size is gonna be 186 milliseconds. Now, originally I had the density higher and the time higher, but keep in mind using more of these grains is gonna substantially uh, increase the CPU usage. So you can always back that off a little bit more in case your computer is struggling with this patch if there's a lot of stuff going on, or you can maybe, uh, if you have a really great computer, then it doesn't really matter at all. And that's pretty much all that's happening in here, aside from voices, we have two uh, unison voices, detuned 1.50% and stereo 100%. So yeah, this is going to filter number two, which we're gonna get to in just a moment here. And then last but not least, we have the utility engine. So we have a couple things going on here. We have a sub oscillator, we have the rain that we heard, and then we have this white noise wide. And this is going to filter number one for this first one. Now that white noise is really there to create a little bit more more harmonics, make the sound have a little bit more density to it here, especially on the uh, mid upper ranges, especially as this filter sweep opens up because it is going to filter number one. Moving on from there, we have our rain here. Which is a great sample for this pad here. We're using a little bit of this filter here, this 45% high pass, because we don't really need uh, that low end. We kind of just really need the texture sound of the rain, because there's already going to be some low end stuff happening. This one's going to filter number two, so it's kind of bypassing filter number one. And just to point this out real quick, on the filters, we're doing split mode. So filter number one is going to FXA, and filter number two is going to FXB. So filter number one is not going out of filter number one, and then going into filter number two, they are independent of each other. 
Now this volume is going to be on a macro right up here, macro number 3.78, so 78%, which is going to be this rain one over here. So moving this basically just controls the volume of this second noise oscillator in the utility engine. And last but not least, we have our sub oscillator here, which gives a little bit nice uh, low end to our, to our pad here. Now this is down one octave here, it is a sine wave and the output is direct out because we don't want this low end sine wave going through all our different effects and delays and, and reverbs and all that stuff. We want to have it just by itself going directly out bypassing the effects and the filters, which would be kind of pointless to filter a sine wave. So with that being said here, I believe that is all for the engines here. So let's turn these back on here. All of these three. So without the effects and with our envelopes, it sounds something like this. So not a bad start at all. Um, now we need to talk about our filters here. So over here on the first filter, this Jupiter 8, we should take a look and see what's going there. So since we're in the utility engine, we know that this white noise is going to filter number one. We can look at the engine number two, and then we can see this going to number two. So we're skipping this one, and then this first one, this wavetable one, the first one we talked about is going to filter number one. So it might be helpful if we turned off this uh, second one and then turned off these two here. So we can just see this uh, noise oscillator and then the wavetable going to filter number one. So I put the cutoff here at about 611 hertz, and this is also getting modulated by that same function right over here, right? So once we hold it, it's going to hold the, the filter open, and then once we let go of our notes, it's going to close it. The same modulation that we have on this position is also doing the same mo motion on the cutoff. So they're kind of working together and synchronized because it's the same modulator, so it's very useful in that sense there. We're using the Jupiter 8 because I always feel this this uh, this filter is very smooth. There's not really any kind of added stuff to it. It's just a smooth filter overall. And for this type of sound, it seemed appropriate to use this type of filter. No resonance, no keyboard tracking. It's going to be on a low pass 24. No change in volume here. And then panning is going to be in the center. And then this multi-mode here, so I have this here engaged just in case we want to pull something down for other stuff that's going through this filter. So the second wave or the second engine here, which is the female uh sound, and then the uh, the rain noise. So you can pull that back here if you want to. I kind of just left this there in case you needed to change it, but it's not really cutting out really anything of the signal there. Okay, so now time to get into a lot of effects here. So take a deep breath, maybe get a cup of coffee and come back to this because we're using nine effects modules. So let's turn off our auxiliary, let's turn off FXB and let's look at just A here. Turn off this one and this one here. So the first thing what we're doing here is designing this patch. There was a lot of that mud low end stuff that I cannot stand, which is this band here. And that's gonna be at 174 Hertz. So I pulled that down by about 3.13 dB which around this mud area spot, you can bring it down and it clears up the sound quite a bit, but just be careful if you take out too much, you're kind of gonna be shooting yourself in the foot a little bit too much. From there, we're gonna go into a delay. Now this is going to be a one over four delay. The fine is gonna be 0 0.105 milliseconds, feedback 3.352, stereo width 0.84, no high pass and no low pass here. It's gonna be on ping pong as well. Kind of just makes it a little bit larger than live. And then you look here and you see the dry wet's going to be at 0% but is actually modulated from our macro 4 at 0 0.20. So 20% if this FX macro here is all the way to the right. Next up we have a reverb. What is a pad without reverb? Pre-delay, 20 milliseconds, size 1, DK, 0 0.460, stereo width 0.5, high pass 200, low pass 15K, and then dampening 0 0.60. The dry wet's 0 by default here, and then modulated by 0.18 or 18% and tied to this macro here. Next up, FXB over here. So this one is first going to hit a delay. Now remember, 
that these effects are parallel. So whatever's coming into FXB is going to be coming from filter number two. And that means that it's going to be this engine number two, the sample, and then also the rain sound. So this ah, this female ah, and the rain sound is going to be processed only by FXB. So we're hitting it first with a delay. which is going to be one over four, the fine zero feedback 0.352, stereo width 0.7, ping pong, no high pass and no low pass. Dry wet zero, but modulated by 0.20 or 20%. Next up, we have shimmer going on here. The pitch shift is gonna be seven, so seven semitones up, which is gonna be the perfect fifth. Feedback 0.272, size 50%, modulation 1, high pass frequency 200, low pass 7K, zero ducking, stereo width at 1, and this is going to be an octave up. Our dry wet is going to be 0, and then it's going to be modulated by 0 0.20 or 20%. Which that reverb tail is really nice for this. Last but not least for this is going to be a chorus, and this is going to be on the reverb-like preset down over here, which I've really come to like. It sounds really cool. So you can read all these here if you select on the preset. I'll kind of spare us some little time here, but I didn't change any of these. The dry wet's going to be zero, but modulated by 0.10, so 10%, which is this, this preset, this reverb-like for the chorus is very cool, but just used in very small doses of dry wet amount. So last but not least, we have this auxiliary. So when we turn this on, this over here, this comb plus, this macro is tied to this send knob. So as we turn this all the way to the right, it's basically gonna be the send for all these effects here. So it first hits a multi-filter, the comb filter, the feed forward, the FF one. And this is just slowly going back and forth and kind of just making these dips and grooves in the sound and kind of just moving it around. And then uh, this comb frequency is modulated by LFO one right over here, which we saw before, which, which was the, uh, the phase modulation amount. So that's kind of just moving that slowly here. We have our Q at 7.75. And then also this other multi-filter is going to be this notch filter, kind of doing the same motion. It's going to be modulated by the same modulator, LFO1 at 0 0.40. The slope's 24. It's on notch over here. And the Q is 6.96. .96. And then last but not least, we have the Chorus Juno 6 on the Mode 2 preset. And this is going to be a 50% dry wet. So even if this knob is all the way to the right, it's still only processing 50%. So that like kind of thing that you're hearing, that's going to be this process right over here. So there's quite a lot going on in this patch here. So kind of went a little bit overboard for this one. But uh, yeah, if you stuck it through all, all the way through the video, please let me know in the comments below because this one kind of took a little bit longer than most of them do. So if you'd like to get a copy of this preset for free, there's a link in the video description below and it can be yours. But just keep in mind, this is quite CPU heavy. So if it is taxing your computer, maybe drop down the poly I did to six. You can probably put it maybe to four or whatever you want to or you could even go to the sample engine and back off the density and the size time or maybe the release times or reverb tail stuff like that will kind of help out with cpu usage in the uh, in the long run so yeah thanks for watching hopefully you learned something and we'll see you in the next video